What is up, everyone? Welcome to the Cub Cooker Supernatural Podcast. My name is Jacob Cooker, but my friends call me Cub, and you should too. I've got an awesome episode planned for everyone today. We are jumping into the hidden teachings of Jesus Christ. This is a brand new series. It's actually the same series we've been doing on Sundays. I'm just changing the name a bit to be more clear about exactly what we're doing here. We've had so many questions on what the word esoteric means, and really it just means hidden. So rather than the esoteric teachings of Jesus Christ or the esoteric gospel reading, as we were calling it, I just wanted to be a lot more clear about what we're doing, and we really are looking at what I believe has been hidden about the teachings of Jesus Christ, okay? Not hidden by some conspiracy or anything like that, but just hidden from plain eyes, from eyes that uh, don't see on that level, that don't, ears that don't hear on that level. Excuse me. Um, Allergies going around like crazy today, so... Uh, Occult means hidden too, absolutely, Uh, K. Miller. Um, And so, you know, I'm going to look into some of the occult teachings as well. Uh, That's a word that I think sparks a lot of fear in a lot of people. And really, it's just uh, looking at all the signs, the symbols, the processes, the orders, understanding the hierarchy of the universal energetic display, uh, which we call the spiritual matrix. Most people interpret, believe, follow doctrine or dogma that is built on a physical matrix rather than a spiritual matrix. And I'm going to put my, okay, I put my do not disturb on, so I should be back on Facebook here. So uh, what's up, uh, Jorge? How are you doing, my friend? Edward, welcome. Mike Lopez, thanks for being here. Kay Miller, thanks for being here. Uh, So Tara, how are you doing? I hope you're having a great day. Uh, We'll wait for a few people to jump on here. This is a live interactive podcast, so you guys ask questions, comments, prayer concerns as we go here. I am going to be reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 4, verse 30, all the way through through 54 today. So we're going to finish out John, chapter 4. I want to remind you, we don't know who wrote John. We don't know, no, no, who wrote a lot of these uh, books that are within the biblical canon. Um, And everything I'm going to say today is within all love, light, respect, and honor to every walk of life, faith, tradition, race, orientation, religion. Um, And I don't care who you're married to. I don't care what the color of your skin is, where you do or don't go to church. As long as you're here in love and light, that's what we do. Uh, Building a better world through Gnosis, uh, which is taking knowledge and wisdom together, divine feminine, divine masculine, putting them together to bear the logos, the Christ energy in our life so that we can better know the spiritual entities behind those energies, Um, which is what we're going to look at today. The uh, Christ in the flesh, Jesus Christ uh, that is in the uh, canonical gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. During the week, I'm reading through the Gnostic gospel of Thomas right now. Uh, we'll continue with other Gnostic Gospels. I've already done Gospel of Mary Magdalene. It was considerably shorter. Um, and then we also go through the Book of Enoch uh, in the afternoon. So I do two of these a day, one on Sundays. Um, and then on Saturdays, just so you guys know, um, I take really good care of our Mythos group. And we get on a live call together where we can actually see each other and talk back and forth. Uh, we've got a ton of uh, my video trainings over there and a private YouTube channel. We've got a private Facebook group. Um, we've got a private chat group. We've got everything going on over there. If you want to dive deeper down the rabbit hole with me, support what I'm doing here, jump on over to cubcooker.com, C-U-B-K-U-K-E-R.com, or all of my profile links and all the stuffs. You can't miss it. Uh, it's also stand.store slash cubcooker. Those are my only two URLs that you can go to. Uh, Any other ones are probably people going around trying to pretend to be me. We've had a lot of that. So just be aware. Go to cubcooker.com, C-U-B-K-U-K-E-R.com. You can find and follow me on all my socials there as well as my podcast and check out all of my spiritual resources there. So we're going to get in today. We talked about uh, the woman at the well and uh, just a quick reminder about like how I'm reading the Gospels right now. 
we have to understand, and, and this is some new new downloads, new infos that I've really gotten uh, in the last like week. Um, because, and, and today I was studying this morning on Dante's Inferno, if you've ever read that, and understanding that that book um, was really his... Um, his stance against his, you know, fists in the air, uh, using a certain finger towards, uh, a certain religious group, uh, the Roman Catholic church. And, uh, Dante was actually, um, uh, exiled from his hometown. I watched a whole Ted talk on it this morning. It was really interesting. And he wrote that book and all the characters in the book in the seven layers of hell there are the religious leaders that, exiled him and, and and other people that he knew and it was really interesting because he was really making a socio-political economic religious statement around all of that and it's it's mind-blowing when we when we understand that that's what this is too this bible that we all have i don't think you can see it on green screen but um you know this uh the word of god came about with king james uh, cause he had his name on it and he wanted to make sure that was the word, the word of God, rather than what is the Greek of it? It's the logos, the divine expression of God. That's what the word of God is. Yet we have every church in the country right now preaching that the word of God is the literal Bible. And guys, I'm just here to tell you, think about it. Think about it. You may argue with me. You may not agree with me, but just stop and think about it and go, okay, what, what really is the word they use for the word of God? Like in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. The word was God. And then we say, well, no, that's Jesus. Well, no, that's the Bible. No, that's the, that's the spoken word of God. Well, stop and just think about it. And that's what I'm doing here. This esoteric, this, this deeper level, hidden teachings of Jesus Christ. What is that? And again, I'm not doing this from a Christian perspective. This is not an evangelical perspective. This is not like, I'm not trying to change anyone here. I just want to open your mind so that you can transform from the inside out. Um, because no matter what walk of life you are, whether you're you're deconstructing, reconstructing, just now searching, you've been searching your whole life, or you completely disagree with everything I'm saying, just know that I love you. And I think this is conversation that has to be had. And so the idea of the logos, Christ is the logos. So think about every time we read the words of Jesus here, that's the logos. It's the divine expression speaking. Um, and by the way, that's within you and me. And we talk a lot about when that logos, that, that energy, the love that he speaks of, that love is the path, the path within. Once you love yourself, you love others. Uh, once you actually forgive yourself, you forgive others. Like it's, it's within quieting the mind, quieting the heart, uh, allowing your spirit to unify to the throne of God. All of this is also about chakras. It's also about Zodiac. It's also all about your five senses. Um, did it all happen literally? Sure. Great. Maybe. I don't know. Yes, definitely it did. I don't know. I can't tell you I wasn't there guys. So my whole point in doing this is like, what does it mean to us today? Aside from the doctrine and dogma of you got to believe this, this, and this so that you don't burn in whatever. What does it really mean to us? Where's the power in this message that's been lost, hidden, uh, secreted away, whatever you want to say. Again, not conspiratorial here, but we do have to understand that we have a canonized biblical um, selection of 66 books right now here in the West because of socio-political, economic manipulation, control, guidance, some good, some bad, lots of human fingerprints on that biblical canon that we have now. And so my whole point of this whole channel and everything, we look at faith, spirituality, and the paranormal. What is all of this? How does it all fit together? How do What do aliens have to do with Jesus? What does Jesus have to do with the Zodiac? What does the Zodiac have to do with your birth sign? What does your birth sign have to do with your karma, with your energies, with your spiritual gifts? What about the mythologies? What about all the gods? What does all this fit in? Guys, it all fits together. I'm here to tell you it, it literally all fits together. And once you you start getting there and you just clear out limiting beliefs, you go, wait a minute. Okay, I see how that's a representation of this. I see how this God in this pantheon is this God in this pantheon. I see how Christ fulfilled all the zodiac. He was the 13th zodiac. He was the light bearer, the serpent wielder, 
from the Garden of Eden, and that's been hidden from us because we're told that the Garden of Eden is where we fell in sin because we're sinful rather than sin was put upon us by the things which we did and the fallen angels and even the God in the Garden in chapter 2. Now, you know, as I say in chapter 1 of Genesis is the divine spirit, the fractal God, the, the, the unity of the feminine and the masculine, the Elohim, the plural creating and he said it was good he she they said it was good it was good it was good by the way it says we were created male female not male and female male female it was a perfect unity of of, an ascended being that was one that was all that was connected to the father and christ represents that and we see the archetype of christ being the divine masculine on earth and mary magdalene his wife I know, big conspiracy theory there. His wife, Mary Magdalene, was the divine feminine. They created the unity of the Godhead together, showed us exactly what that should look like in self. This isn't a marriage thing. I'm not telling anybody. This is not anything like that. You know, I've got the rainbow flag in my profile, and I love you guys, and I'm talking about within self. You can be completely alone and find this unity within yourself. And that's what I talk about every day here. And it's so important to me because there's so many people out there hurting right now. And around the holidays, as we go into the holidays, you're going to have plenty of dogmatic, doctrinal, whatever at your dinner tables. And our job in this community is, and I've been talking with the mythos community, is just love, 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 love. And it's not always easy. But you have to love yourself first. You have to unify your masculine and your feminine within self The chalice and the dagger, as Dan Brown calls it in his books, and the Da Vinci Code. Um, Guys, all of this fits together, and it all makes sense. And and you don't have to be a nerd or a bookworm to get it. You don't have to um, go quit your job or anything like that. But you do have to give up a lot. And you do have to say, hey, I just want truth. Like, I want to know truth, and I'm willing to deconstruct from any any habits, any belief systems, any uh, patterns in my life that don't serve my higher understanding of what this cosmic ballet is that we're all a part of. And that's why I put this beautiful zodiac sun behind us. Ra, the sun god, Christ, the son of God, the light of the world. Jesus said, when I'm in the world, I'm the light of the world. Um... He said, if thine eye be single, the whole body is full of light. Light is such a big, big, big thing in the Bible. And it is so esoteric and it is so literal. That's why I go out in the sun every morning. I pray, I meditate, I sun gaze. Briefly, I'm not telling you to go burn out your eyes or anything. You don't have to do what I do. I just, uh, I love, 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 love the sun. And I get so much energy from it. And I can, I can feel it just upgrade my consciousness when I'm in it. It doesn't take all morning uh, just, you know, a, a 15, 20 minute prayer and meditation, gratitude, energy work session in the light of the sun is so important because we have to remember these are all physical archetypes of a spiritual truth. And by the way, you can take the word spiritual and transmute it into the word scientific. OK, we understand energies and we understand the quantum realm now or at least a little bit. That's what all of these spiritual texts are talking about. It's all metaphysical, guys. It's all metaphysical. Well, well, how do you get from you know the quantum realm to all of a sudden you have all these beings that are like gods and and angels and stuff? Because energy has consciousness. Like we see that we see that we know that we know that by observing it, it decides and changes what to do, or we have some sort of conscious effect on it. So I'm a little fired up this morning, guys, but I just this is really important because when you begin to read the gospel like this, you begin to understand what was going on then. And we've done a really good job of trying to tie Jesus to be the savior, the Jewish savior. And while, of course, he was born in that time and that was going on, you have two archetypes here of control going on, and that's what he came to stand against. What is the beast system? It's a religious, it's an economic, and it's a political system of control. So how do we get that? We just read Revelation and you understand that. But you understand that because you understand where Christ came into the world and what he was dealing with and what love did 
what they did to him because of the love that he brought. He brought a very simple message. He said, ye are gods. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. But he called himself the son of man. The son of man translated is humanity. By the way, we are humanity. You are the son or the daughter of a man and a woman. Unless we have any canines listening. I'm sure your pets are listening with you. So Christ within, absolutely metanosis. What's up, my brother? Um, I won't talk about that today, metanosis, but I will be talking about that in the future as we get into this. So uh, maybe Christ was teaching uh, about was also the God of Adapa. I don't know what Adapa is. I'm sorry. You're over my head with that. Um, word is he speaks personally to absolutely. Um, got to get my coffee this morning. Uh, I'll try to hide the logo on there cause I have no affiliation with, uh, I need to get a coffee sponsor for this. That's what we need guys. That's important. So, uh, how do we refine our oil? Good question. My friend, good question. We're going to talk a little bit more about food and diet today. Now I'm not going to talk about the actual diet that you're ingesting, but I want to talk about your esoteric diet. And we're going to look at what Christ is talking about here as we get into the last part of chapter 4 of the Gospel of John. But let me just leave you with this. Understand that the Jews held the religious law. And by the way, if you're Jewish, I love you. This is, this is absolutely nothing. I'm just talking about the, the facts of what was going on in this time uh, with Jesus has dropped in. He's manifest and he's within a system of religious control and a system of political and economic control. And by the way, both sides had economic control going on. You could go and buy things like sacrifices and salvation from uh, the Jewish leaders that were holding over everyone the Mosaic Law. Uh, he even told them, you know, you have the keys, but you yourself will not even go through the door, and you prevent others from going through the door. Love your content, user double O says. Thank you very much, my friend. Um, and so, yes, two priesthoods, Levitical and Melchizedek. I'll talk about that in a second. Um, and so you've got this system over here, and people are like, you know, they may like say, oh, down with Rome, but they're going to go and do this. Well, then they still find that the door is locked over there. They still, even within the religious system. How many of you guys have found that in your life? Like you found a church, you found, oh, you got a great church home. And then a few years later, you find out, oh, these people are not what I thought. Or, you know, I don't really agree with that. Or I had this idea and then they just shot me down and, and nobody, and, and nobody understands. And they told me my gifts are satanic or they said, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Um, and you find out like, that's, that's not what, that's not really what it, all this was about. It's not what my experience is of it for sure. Um, and then you go, well, maybe, maybe it's in the world. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'll serve the world. I'll just try to be a good person. I'll get involved in my local governments. I'll do, you know, I'll, I'll try to help my city be better or whatever. Uh, and then you find out, oh, well, that, that's, that's not going to change. And, and then and you find yourself like, what is this all about then? Cause if I can't get it over here and I can't get it over here, what, what is it? Um, and by the way, if you're in, involved in local governments, good for you. Awesome. Awesome. That's one thing I'm working on in my hometown, trying to get more involved with that, help better our city and our quality of life, things like that. So I think that's very important, but I'm just saying, if you try to align your purpose with any of these things, you, you really find that those doors are locked on both sides. And so you had Rome and you had, uh, the Jewish leadership within the time of Christ. And he really, his message was dissolving both both of those systems. Um, and again, uh, this is, this is a very peaceful message too. This was not, they were expecting a savior to come with literal sword in hand and overthrow all of the oppression and fulfill all of the Mosaic law. And while he did fulfill all the Mosaic law, uh, he also fulfilled a lot of other prophecies. He also just fulfilled the Zodiac. He fulfilled the chakras. He fulfilled consciousness. He fulfilled you and me because he showed and proved and brought a message and said divinity is in humanity ye are gods the son of man must this the son of man must that humanity and even isus which is his real name isus if you read the original scriptures and you understand you know it's not G jesus is derivative of isus 
He is us. Jesus. He is us. You guys get where I'm going with this? He, he brought a message that is here to empower you to light your divine spark and allow you to burn brightly in the night, a lamp on a hill, okay? And I'm given a message that's not popular. I have pastors argue with me about this. Oh, you're not, you're not focused on Jesus. I'm focused on Jesus if he's burning bright within me. And by the way, he does not have to be a, a historical figure. He is the Christ consciousness, the Christ energy, the frequency of love seated on my heart, allowing me to have the gnosis of who I am and go straight to the Father. And by the way, the mother, because if you read the Septuagint, the, the Greek Old Testament, you understand that the Holy Spirit that we've all been waiting for and, and, and missing out on, and I'm going to do a lot deeper dive into this, guys, is the Sophia. It's wisdom. It's the divine feminine. It's the mother. By the way, who wants to receive you and has a love for you that your father can't give you? Let me say that again. The Holy Spirit, the Divine Mother, wants to receive you and give you love that the Father can't give you. But the Father can give you every gift that you need because it's that masculine energy, <clears throat> the sword, and uh, the dagger, and the chalice. can be represented literally by a V or a pyramid or an apex, whatever you want to call it. You guys know exactly what I'm talking about now. This is... This is so deep and it's so beautiful and it so unlocks you and allows you to become a being of light again that has been trapped in the flesh, by the way. All this stuff about crucifying the flesh, all this stuff about coming out of Egypt, all this stuff about the God in the Old Testament, Yahweh says, I am your God, Yahweh from out of Egypt. That God that you served, that you had to sacrifice to and you had to feel bad about everything, you didn't think you were good enough. That's because you have daddy issues with that father because that's not the father Christ was talking about. The father Christ is talking about is perfect and loving and pure. And it's a pure energy, a fractal mind. It's unified with the feminine and it's perfect and it's beautiful and it, and it animates all things. Everything we see in our physical matrix has that energy coming through it in various forms, spectrums, and arcs as an archangel. Michael, Raphael, you've got all the archangels. What are those? They're frequencies. They're arcs of light. No, no, no. They're real beings. Yeah, they are. Absolutely. But we see it and experience it here. We experience the energies, the frequencies, the lights, the colors, the sounds. All of those are representative of spiritual entities. And that's where we have lost. Every piece of data has been lost in all of our new systems. And it was getting lost back then. And Christ came to return all of that to us, okay? And remind us that once you go within, all the mysteries and the secrets are unlocked. Nothing that is hidden will not be revealed, he said. And he's not just talking about like, you know, that, that before God, now you're, you're going to be naked again like in the, in the Garden of Eden, which is what a lot of pastors will, will feed you on that. And I'm not against pastors at all. I have a ton of pastors who are, are my literal best friends. We don't agree on everything. So I'm not I'm not here. This is not down with anybody. This is like, this is a message of love. And you have the keys, by the way. All you have to do is start looking. And if you're here on my channel, you're in a great place. Because I promise you, I will keep uncovering faith, spirituality, paranormal, you, you, you like aliens and ETs and UFOs? Check out my Enoch series every afternoon at 3 p.m. We're, we're going through Enoch, looking at the mist, the keys of Enoch, as this series is called. And we're looking at all the extraterrestrial stuff around that, the paranormal stuff. The extraterrestrial keys of Enoch. What's it all about? Well, I thought he was before God. Well, he was before a God. He saw a throne. He saw a fire that didn't burn him. He stepped through doors. He heard noises he had never heard. There were things described like metals and curvatures. Really, really interesting stuff, guys. Well, I don't believe in alien. Okay, that's fine. 
You don't have to believe in any of this. But you need to know it. Because once you know it, the more you know, the less you know. And the less you know, the more wisdom you can have. And the more wisdom you have, you take knowledge and wisdom. And it becomes gnosis. Gnosis is the pathway to that Christ energy in your life. It is the logos. And th again, this is all so deep, guys. And it's beautiful. It's beautiful. And you don't, you don't have to be into woo-woo to love it. I know I wear a tie-dye t-shirt and I come out here like, ah, so, everything's so weird. I'm telling you, you guys, you know, we went to a beautiful concert last night at our symphony here in our, our hometown. And it was a different experience for me because I just saw all the people, all the love, all the stories. I literally could see people that were having a bad night, like like sitting around me, like people that were drinking too much or arguing with their spouses. Or um, I saw people that were there to be seen. I saw people that were there because they were hurting and they were looking to be transformed by music. I saw people that were just there because they have season tickets but and unexpectedly had a beautiful, beautiful evening that just transcended time, the confines of time. So we're going to jump in. I'm going to, I'm going to burn through the end of this book here uh, or the end of this chapter here in John chapter four. Get a little fuel up on coffee here. So, um, yeah, do some research. Read more than just the King James Bible. Um, look into how all things came to be. God most. Hi, Gretchen. Amen, my friend. Gretchen, I hope you're doing well. Uh, yeah, and that's absolutely true, guys. And and so you know, I have a King James Bible. I have a Catholic Bible. I have a Christian Standard Bible. I have a Sefer Hebrew Bible. I have um, an NLT, an NIV, a message um, I've got a C.S. Lewis Bible. I've got a Jesus Storybook Bible. I got it all, guys. Um, and I read it all, you know. But then I got, I look at the Greek, like what's the, on Bible Hub, what is the Greek in the New Testament? And then I look at the Septuagint, what's the Greek Old Testament? Um, try to understand where all of this is really coming from. And there's a lot of things that are what we call lost in translation. Lost in translation, so... Uh, what's up, Greg? How are you doing, my friend? Um, okay, so let's read this, uh, cause then we can really get into the meat of this. So he's at the woman at the well, by the way, he asks her, you know, go get your husband. She's like, I don't have a husband. He's like, yeah, you're, you're, you're right. You don't. Um, and she's like, how did you know that? And, uh, he's like, you know, you, you have five that you're with, but you're not married to. And she's like, what? How do you know that? Like, uh, and I read this last week, so you can go through the verbatim of it. I'm just paraphrasing here. Um, but she's like, you know, how do you know about that? Um, he says, you had five husbands. And he whom you have now is not your husband. You have said this truly. But think about this, guys. The five husbands she had are the five senses, okay? Your sight, your sound, your taste, your smell, and your feels, or your touch. All the things that you perceive the physical realm with. And he says, but the one you have now is not your husband. The sixth, what's the sixth sense? It's the energetic. The, the, the sense that we are not taught about, we are not trained into. We're taught that it's woo-woo or superhuman or... Um, it's for Marvel or for DC or it's for Lord of the Rings or something beyond for a time lost or a time yet to come. But remember, heaven is here now within you. The kingdom of God is within you. And that's where he is talking about the unity with that sixth, the sixth husband, the unity of the sixth sense. And, um, he's, t he's telling her like, Hey, I will give you water that you will never thirst again. He's talking about the well of the old law, the old prophets, even the cattle that were used for the sacrifices drank from this well. And he's saying, you'll get thirsty again. Again, it's all esoteric guys. Y you go and you hear this in a Bible study and they're like, Oh, we just need the water of Jesus. 
And I'm like, I'm telling you, he's literally talking about the fact that that well, even though there's water in it, is dried up. And it's from the, the sacrifices for the cattle. It's from the, the Mosaic law. It's from even the fathers of that faith. He's like, you'll get thirsty again because there's not like that. There's no life in that. You can do that if you want. But I'm talking about the water that will well up from you like springs that renew perpetually, infinitely. And now he's going to talk about food. Dietary law was a huge, huge thing back then. Uh, it's still something that's very much talked about now. If you're in my community, if you're in the mythos community, you know we've been talking about wellness lately. We've been talking about, um, you know, I eat a lot more vegetarian now um, and, and fish, chicken, stuff like that. Uh, but I eat, I try to limit like my beef, even though I'm in West Texas, it's very hard. Um, and it's not like out of like dietary law or anything. It's just the smell of it doesn't, doesn't get me hungry anymore. Um, sometimes it even smells bad. Uh, cheese has gotten where it just has a real like sewage like smell to me. All of this, uh, weirdly came about after my awakening. I got the C to the Rona, can't say that on here, uh, in 21. Uh, after 2020, the whole thing going down, everything was shut down. Uh, and luckily, I didn't get it then, but I got it in 21, and I thought I was going to die. Um, and, and I'm telling you, between that and my awakening and my agreements with God in 2020, and just like that whole thing... It was nothing but a period of just putting things in the fire, putting things in the, the burnishing furnace and just burning away anything that didn't serve me. And that included, I think, literal changes to my own makeup, my own cosmetics within um, my genome. Do I have proof of that? No, I don't. But I know I'm different. I can feel that I'm different. I can feel that my body metabolizes differently. I can feel that uh, things taste, smell, feel different, perceived different. Uh, you may call it a different vibration, a different timeline. Uh, it could be light code upgrades, whatever. You, you know, there's a lot of different for all of that. I think it's a combination of everything. I think that these angelic entities or ETs, whatever you want to call them, they are here to help serve and help return humanity. You know, oh, there's fallen angels. Too. Yeah, there's fallen angels, of course. You can't just, just like you, you have to use discernment with who you trust in real life. You got to use discernment with who you trust within the energetic and spiritual realm. And if you're in the frequency of love, then there can be no darkness in that. And I remind my community all the time, you guys in Mythos, there's, there's several people in there that have paranormal experiences regularly. And we always talk about discernment and the frequency of love. And that's what we're going to hear about here, too. Um, and so this is not specifically about, you know, your physical diet. This is more about uh, it's easily interpreted as, oh, what you watch on TV, what you watch on TikTok, what you watch on Facebook, what you watch on YouTube, uh, what you listen to on podcasts. You know, there's just because you like podcasts doesn't mean you're learning anything. Um. And just because you listen to mine doesn't mean you're learning anything. If you're vibing with it and you go deep on what I'm talking about and really activate on all this stuff and really begin to practice the spirituality of everything that we're talking about here, that's when things shift. That's when you jump timelines. That's when you upgrade. That's when your consciousness expands. That's when the flower of the mind opens. That's when the gnosis happens. That's when the logo sets upon your heart. That's when you can go directly to God. And it is a walk. It is a path. It is a process. It is not a one, two, three step program. It is a continual. That is why you're here to realize, to come into agreement, to understand, to gain the gnosis of who you really are, who the Christ really is. And by the way, this is this is perfectly applicable to any faith tradition or religion or whatever you follow or came from. That's what I love about what I teach. It is a universal a universal understanding, a universal Christ, a universal metaphysical experience of the authentic reality. 
So, verse 30, chapter 4 of John. Longest intro in the world. You guys know that I love to do that, but that's half of what we talk about on here is the intros and all the context and the depth. Verse 30, they went out of the city and were coming to him. In the meanwhile, the disciples urged him, saying, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you don't know about. The disciples therefore said to one another, Has anyone brought him something to eat? They are thinking, seeing, hearing, and acting on their carnal, flesh, physical, 3D, matrix mind. So think about that. He's like, hey, I've got, I've got food to eat. I've got food to eat. Hey, and by the way, uh, Salus, if you think I'm teaching false teaching, that's totally cool. There's a million other channels for you out there, my friend. But you're welcome to stay here and learn something. I love you. I just want you to know that. Yeah, this is a pagan son because I'm talking about unity of all here, okay? And if you find that to be false teaching or something, if you find that there are signs and symbols, everything is connected, everything is of a higher truth, everybody just has little pieces of it, and I'm just trying to return all those pieces to one, to unity, as they were scattered from the Tower of Babel, the Gate of El, which we talked about on the series I've been doing with Joshua. Um, anyway, stick around. It all fits together. And yeah, it's a pagan sun. But uh, by the way, I have Nordic roots, lots of uh, Viking, lots of deep magic, lots of uh, uh, that type of thing from my lineage, Kukar. Um, so you can imagine, you know, my ancestors and the deep, deep of winter. You've probably seen these types of, um, you know, in, in Game of Thrones and stuff like that. So uh, say less welcome, my friend. Uh, Sayla says, I'll, I'll stay, uh, and hear what you say. So awesome. Thank you for being here, my friend. Um, we got lots and lots of people that don't agree with what I say until they watch three or four or five episodes. And it's like, oh, okay, I, I see what you're talking about. Cause it's so hard to get out in one 60 minute episode. This is all so deep and it's all so rounded. And by the way, I know so little, let me just say that I know so little. So I'm not here saying I get it all. I'm just saying somebody, I didn't see anyone doing what I'm doing, not to the extent of what I'm doing. I saw a few people that just went to the super new age side and is like, oh, none of it matters. It's just all, I think that it all matters. And I think that from Hinduism to Zoroastrianism to Buddhism to Kabbalah to uh, Hebrew mysticism to um, Egyptian to Greek, I think it all is a piece of the puzzle, and I think it all means something, and I think it's important to try and understand the similarities, the continuities between everything. So, um, so, all right, I, I gotta quit taking questions. I love you guys, but I gotta, I gotta read here. So, uh, so they're again, they're thinking with their carnal mind, their flesh mind, which is like, hey, I don't see the food that you brought. Oh, who gave him food? You know, the guys. He's got low blood sugar over here, you know. We know Jesus, you know. He's got to he's got to have a Snickers, you know, or he gets angry, right? You know. Um That was a joke about those commercials, by the way. Um so they're just thinking on this level. But Jesus says to them, "My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his work." So think about that. My food. What is food? Food is sustenance. Food is, what is sustenance? Sustainability. Sustaining of the life force. My life force is to do the will of he who sent me and to accomplish his work. Don't you say that there are yet four months until the harvest? Behold, I tell you, lift up your eyes and look at the fields. They are white for harvest already. They would get heads on the grain, by the way. That's what that means. So... Uh, if you've ever gone through Nebraska or Iowa, where a lot of my family settled after coming from Germany, there uh, you go through and you see all the cornfields and the grain fields, and they'll get like pops of white heads on them. And it's like you can tell harvest is like, like you better be gassing up the tractor because it's time. 
that's what he's talking about here. And I'm not talking about like your doomsday revelation version of all of this, which by the way, I don't think is, is what we've all read into it. Now I'm going to do a revelation reading, I promise, but I'm still downloading stuff on it. It's still coming into understanding about it to the point where I feel comfortable publicly talking about it. So, um, but for this, like guys, it's within self too. Like the harvest is here. Like he's doing the work and he's like, you don't understand. Like people are waking up and they have to get this message now. And, and that is a timeless message because we're still in that. There's people, we got a, a couple hundred people on the live stream right now. We're going to have thousands of people watch it within the next 72 hours, you know, three days and we'll go to, you know, tens of thousands of views on these things. And I'm so thankful for that. But people are waking up and they need the message now. The field, the heads are popping on the grain right now. People are going, wait a minute. They just woke up. They just got raptured. They just got caught up. They just contacted their higher self. They just crucified their lower flesh. They just started seeing all these things. Their eyes were open. Their third eye was open. Guys, it's all different language for the same things. It's all different language for the same things. Why is the language important? Because we were scattered in language at the Tower of Babel. Well, that didn't literally happen. That's just a myth story. Sure, fine. Maybe it did. Yes, it did. I don't know. The point is, we have language barriers no matter what. And by the way, you can speak perfect English or West Texas English like I do. And we can still have miscommunications, disagreements, and frequency interference between where we're at. That's also the Tower of Babel, by the way. Not just the words. It's the frequencies. Okay? Think about the whole of the Zodiac chart being fulfilled within Christ like the perfect man. Well, how come we can't get that? Well, because we're still spinning on this cycle of reincarnation. You're still coming back and living through different signs, perfecting, being perfected going through the fire so that you can be what reborn in spirit and go to that literal next level the thing behind the veil that nobody that we know is there and we can kind of experience it here and you see it vibrate and you, you hear it or you get a flash of it or you know you look through a microscope and you and all the and it's, uh, oh, it's, it's the microscopic world or the quantum world, same as the cosmic world. And it's like all back and forth. And w what about the day we get to step behind that veil and actually be fully present with that energy in an eternal manner? Oh, you're talking about heaven? No, I'm not talking about pearly gates. I'm talking about reincarnating until we get it, until we become the Christ ourself, until humanity ascends. Well, that's not what the gospel. Yeah, it really is. Like, I really, I really see that. I really do believe that. And it's not anti-biblical whatsoever to understand that reincarnation was very, very much a part of that spirituality system, especially within the East. You got the Magi coming from the East, the order of Melchizedek and the Levitical priesthood, two different ones, Levitical priesthood being the letter of the law, the old law, the doctrine, the dogma, like the building of that that line. Everybody was trying to tie him to that. But then you got the Melchizedek priesthood. The Melchizedek priesthood is a magic priesthood. He served El Elyon. He blessed Abraham. He was the one that actually blessed Abraham. Um, he served in El Elyon. He is a magi or a magos. Um, Mary Magdalene. And the Essenes, practicing energy, uh, frequencies, higher consciousness, metaphysical, understanding things on a different different level. Well, that's all pseudo. Whatever. Okay, fine. It, it is until it isn't. It is until we get a thousand years down the road in our scientific discoveries and we understand that not only are we finding this with technology, but we have to find it within self. We have to get there. We have to align our frequency. We can't control the new technology in a thousand years without having our consciousness aligned with it, without understanding the spirit aspect of it. Because we're getting there, guys. We're getting there. You look at ET technology or what people call fallen angel or angelic technology, 
however it's used, I think determines. There's no way we can just strap into one of those things and fly it around. We would disintegrate. So there's a consciousness and a vibration level that even a, a being that's manifest physically within our 3D world somehow can instantly be in 5D. And it's all consciousness. It's all spirit. It's all quantum. It's all truth. You can't lie to the quantum world or it will destroy you. Oh, so you're a scientist. No, I'm not a scientist guy. I'm just telling you. I know enough. I know enough. And when you read all the ancient doctrines and scriptures and understandings and practices, if you do yoga and meditation, you totally know what I'm talking about because you've experienced it. You have transcended. You have transmuted. You have vibrated at a much higher level and you go, whoa, everything's connected. I am one. We are one. We are all together. Oh, the Beatles knew what, yeah, okay. No, they're Luciferian. Yeah, you're darn right they're Luciferian because they're bringing light into the world, and so am I, and so are you, by the way. Oh, but that's a dangerous word. No, because you don't even know who Lucifer is. That's my challenge for you. Go read who Lucifer actually is and try to understand it in context of what I'm talking about. Lucifer and Satan are not the same thing. Lucifer and Satan are on different ends of the spectrum. They are at war with each other within the energetic or spiritual realms. I'm not talking about literal stuff here, algorithms, just so you know. This is all spiritual, esoteric. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Love the meditation um, uh, emoji. So, uh, Mandy says, I'm about to begin reading the Bible uh, with the Apocrypha. I'm a bit scared, honestly. Mandy, don't be afraid at all, my friend. Um, just, just really go into it with an open heart and take... You know, take what it's saying with with the heart chakra and don't don't try to digest it with the literal literal literacy, uh, because even like we literally see that here when Jesus is like, you know, my food is to do the will of who, him who sent me. And they're like, oh, do you have food we don't know about? Like, so so don't read it like, you know, a lot of people do. And I want to I want to say probably like. 80 to 90 percent of people that pick up a Bible try to read it literally rather than like what's this esoteric depth in it um, and so you're gonna have fun have fun with it. it you know don't don't take it seriously as in like heaven hell life death like you're already there if you're already there if you're seeking seek and you will find uh, a lot of people get so like oh down and I've got to do better and I gotta and it's not about that, guys. When you start to get there, you don't even taste. You don't even have a taste for the sin anymore, because you just you're, you're you're in a different place. Oh, you're perfect now, Cup. No, trust me, I'm not. But I'm telling you, things I used to struggle with, I don't anymore. And it's all about ascension. Merle, what's up, my brother? How are you doing? Merle's in our mythos community. Uh, you guys, by the way, before I finish this, uh, I did have several people ask about the mythos community. It's over on the website and it's just nine bucks a month. It's kind of like a Patreon type supporter for what I'm doing, but it's just built on my website. Uh, you get access to the private Facebook community, the private calls on the weekends within the community. We do them every Saturday, private video library, plus tons of behind the scenes updates every single day within that group. Um, it's, it's really, really cool. And so if you vibe with what I'm doing and you're just like, man, I just want more of this, it's it's like less than any of your streaming memberships are now. And you get to support a creator that loves you. So thank you for that. I really appreciate that. Uh, but then we just get to interact on a whole different level. And just we, we do challenges in there. And uh, we've got one of the girls in there is doing like a, a study group, going through a bunch of my trainings from my book. And if you join between now and... In January 1st, I'm going to give you a free copy to my audio book, which is the longer version. It's called God-Given Gifts of Brilliance. That's one of the things we're working on in the group now. Uh, you literally will get a code to go download the audio book for free. And I walk through. It's over five hours of me just walking through the book with you, giving you the challenges, helping you activate your spiritual gifts. When I wrote that book, I was in a very church Christianity mindset. 
So it's written from that point of view, but you can tell it's very progressive for that point of view. So you're gonna see similarities to how I teach now in that, but it's also, it's a more comfortable approach, if that makes sense. I think, especially if you're kind of starting your journey, it's a really, really good place to go within that book. So anyway, go check that out. Uh, I'm trying not to sneeze, guys, I'm sorry. I hate scratching my nose during this, but something in my office, I don't know if it's the rug on the wall or I don't know what it is, but it makes me want to sneeze. So I've vacuumed and dusted and, and God only knows what it is. Um, Leathercraft Nation, what's up, my friend? So anyway, y'all go join that. Uh, we have a bunch of people join every time I live stream. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I will welcome you in. I personally will let you into the group there. You can ask me anything. Uh, start conversing and you're going to meet a ton of incredible people. Um, we're going to be getting, uh, we should have a hundred members. Our first hundred members will be in there probably by the end of the year. And I'm for launching it like 30 days ago. I'm really, really thankful. You guys are awesome. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, my food is to do the will of him who sent me to accomplish his work. Don't you say there are four months until the harvest behold, I tell you, lift up your eyes and look at the fields for they are white with harvest already. He who reaps receives wages and gathers fruit to eternal life, that both he who sows and he who reaps may rejoice together. Okay, this is super, super, super similar to the idea of karma here, okay? Um, if you've ever heard of karma, it's like, oh, you give a dollar and you get a dollar. Like, uh, it's not like that, guys. Karma is this beautiful beautiful system of it's an operating system or a mythos it's a set of agreements that you make with your actions your thoughts your emotions and your energies um, and it's a beautiful beautiful system i love karma karma is very biblical karma very much fits into the teachings of christ karma is one of the things that when you begin to understand your own karma and build your own operating system within self that's when things change with that said, he's talking about gathering the harvest, the wages in the karmic traditions. It's called burning karma, okay? And you even hear that you're going to burn the wheat uh, and separate the wheat from the shaft. Like it's all, this is all the same type of language, guys, just from a little bit different angle because they were a very agricultural community. And so you have to understand that he's telling the same karmic story just in a language they would understand and so well no it's not the same thing yeah exactly because you've bought that it's not the same thing because of the language differences because he's telling it to farming type communities and then you have uh more of the uh eastern mysticism that's talking to more like mountain communities um and and things like that so uh you're gonna have different different uh, versions of that but they're all really very very similar it's going really good leathercraft nation y'all go check out my good friend jacob maroney over at leathercraft nation he is a brother in this walk with me uh one of my best friends in the world and we play frisbee all the time he does leather crafting please go follow his channel um even if you're not into leather crafting he gives a lot of just like tangible like life advice on uh, how to work with your hands, whether you're crafting with leather or any other type of substrate or medium, and just find a lot of depth in your life through uh, the idea of being a craftsman or a woman. And it's it's a really cool channel. Go check him out. Um, so yeah, you bet, brother. Um, so to finish this off here, he says, he who reaps receives wages and gathers fruit. We talk about fruit all the time here to eternal life that both he who sows and he who reaps may rejoice together. Okay, sowing and reaping, giving and taking, okay, or giving and receiving, feminine, masculine. You guys see the, like, it just all, it's all deep here, guys. It's all deep. One sows and another reaps. For this, the saying is true. I sent you to reap that for which you haven't labored. Others have labored. And you have entered into their labor. Okay, so what's he saying? You're joining a regularly scheduled program already in progress. If you've ever watched, you know, TV in the late 90s and they had a special report come on and then it goes, oh, Frazier's on now and I'm going to, uh, to join it in its already in progress motion that's partway through the episode. 
that's where we're at guys and that too speaks to this whole wheel of life this whole incarnations reincarnations zodiac all of these things and no he's not literally saying that here but it's like it's already in progress you're joining a narrative already in progress and whether you believe in reincarnation or not i'm not here to convince anybody or whatever i'm just saying it was definitely widely accepted it was talked about it was understood it wouldn't have been that weird um and here in the west we just we go well we're just physical beings and you know what happens after we pass and it's very sad and and i mean that in all love we've all lost i've lost a lot of people this year too and it's one of the biggest challenges of humanity is like when you lose someone you love uh what happens you know where do they go uh because we know that life is not in the body it's within something else that is called self that is called consciousness spirit soul uh you get into some of the deeper eastern traditions and then you see like soul and spirit are different even in the bible it talks about the sword that separates bone from marrow and soul from spirit and like you got all in and there's there's different understandings that you and i don't get because that has been lost and that's why this series is called the hidden teachings of jesus christ because let's let's return let's just return to center source self find out what he was really here to do i truly believe he was here to return self to source not create a bunch of you know whatever um, if you look at christ if you look at him as a yogi a guru he taught the bhakti yoga of love and devotion um, he had his disciples or devotees in the eastern tradition that followed him around they did the spiritual practice with him they sat at his feet and learned and we can esoterically have the same devotee commitment to the teachings of christ which is more what you would consider me i'm a gnostic devotee of christ if you will um and so that 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 inherently separates me i think just in terminology and approach from uh most of what you'll hear within even like the mystic christian teachings so i approach him more as like he's my guru and i want to know what he was really trying to say and try to recover the language the lore the understanding the esoteric the spirit of everything that he was talking about and even the paranormal we're going to get to like the the resurrection we're going to get to the transfiguration here lots of stuff on mountains where we know there's like et activity and some really really weird stuff coming in this gospel so uh stick around you're gonna love it it's awesome you guys are awesome thank you guys for being here thanks uh even people that disagree at first that stay on go check out my other videos everything's organized on my youtube channel everything's over on my website you can go hit that up Cub Cooker, C U B K U K E R dot com, uh, or Stan, S T A N dot store slash Cub Cooker. Those are my only two places. They'll both take you to the same place. So, um, so excited. Sound Pedal says, awesome. Um, yeah, Bone and Marrow. That's right. Um, uh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. No one can separate us from our father. So, um, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. It, it was a good one. I didn't even get through the end of this. I was going to read through uh, verse 54. Well, let me do that just because I titled it that. So, uh, Oh, yeah, yeah, that's why. Okay, so I'm going to jump to verse 48. Therefore, Jesus said to them, unless you see signs and wonders, you will in no way believe. So he's going back to Galilee. Um, and it says, uh, even Jesus said that um, a prophet is not recognized in his hometown. So he's kind of talking about like, you know, they've seen signs and wonders. Oh, now you're believing because you've seen all the miracles. Like now you're believing rather than like receiving my message with a pure and open heart before you had all this proof. Like it's just this. Yeah, we're about to get into John 5 here in a minute. Uh, well, actually next week, um, next Sunday we'll be in John 5. But um, then we have um, the nobleman comes to him talking about um, the the child uh, who's about to pass away. Uh, and Jesus is like, go your way, your son lives. Um, and then they reported saying, uh, your son lives. Yeah, and I had the wrong verse open. Sorry, this is why, this is why, guys. 
you know, my, uh, my ADD, whatever you want to call it. Um, so yeah, that was from John five. I had the wrong verse open. Um, but yeah, okay. I'm just going to read it. Let me, let me just back up and read it. Cause I have to finish it. Cause I already titled it and I can't go back and change it. So, so I'm going to read it. I'm going to finish this episode, right? Okay. From that city, many Samaritans believed in him because of the word of the woman who testified, he who told me everything that I did. So the woman at the well from last week testified to the Samaritans. Uh, and it says, so when the Samaritans came to him, they begged him to stay with them. He stayed there for two days. Many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, now we believe not because of your speaking, for we have heard for ourselves and know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. So this is again where I say these are OPOs, other people's opinions. Okay, like look at what Christ said about himself and then look at what everybody says around him in the, the context around it. So I go to the red letters. What did Christ say about himself? That's how I build my understanding of him and then how I experience him. Uh, they are what I call projecting on him what they needed him to be. And I'm not saying it's not true. I'm not saying you shouldn't, you should or shouldn't believe it. But for, I think what he asked everyone is like, who do you say I am? You have to make up your own opinion on who you believe he is, was, or was not, or was real or wasn't real or whatever. Like that's, that's your opinion and your walk. So I just look at this as like they said he is the Christ, the Savior of the world. That's OPO, other people's opinion. Uh, because he didn't say that in this verse around it. They said that. Uh, because, of course, they're seeing these things and they're like, wow. Uh, after the two days, he went out from there and went into Galilee. For Jesus himself testified that a prophet has no honor in his own country. So when he came into Galilee, the Galileans received him, having seen all the things that he did in Jerusalem at the feast, for they also went to the feast. Jesus came, therefore, again to Cana of Galilee, where he made the water into wine. Remember the wedding at Cana. There was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus had come out of Judea into Galilee, he went to him and begged him that he would come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Therefore Jesus said to him, Unless you see signs and wonders, you will in no way believe. The nobleman said to him, Sir, come down before my child dies. Jesus said to him, Go your way, your son lives. The man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him, and he went his way. As he was now going down, his servants met him and reported, saying, Your child lives. So he inquired of them the hour... When he began to get better, they said, therefore, to him yesterday at the seventh hour, or 1 p.m. in the footnote, the fever had left him. So the father knew that it was at that hour in which Jesus said to him, your son lives. He believed, and as did his whole house. This again the second sign that Jesus did having come out of Judea into Galilee. Now, I wanted to finish that because I've got this behind me. I have the signs, okay? We won't believe unless we have signs. That is still, still, still in the matrix today. And we have all of these things in the matrix to see the signs. We have the signs in ourselves, in others, in the stars, in the heavens, everywhere. They're, it's, they're there for us. So that we may believe. And he even was like, you know, you're, you're just not going to believe if you don't have signs. So here's your signs. There's your sign, right? Um, uh, so weird that it was today's study, uh, the exact book of John 4. Uh, Jay, that's awesome, man. That's awesome. Well, welcome. Um, yeah, this just happens to be where we're at. We're going to jump into John 5 next week where we're going to find some very, very interesting things. Um and if I could keep my head on straight today, I would have just read straight through this, but that's what we do. You guys that are here regularly enjoy my particular brand of jumping around, but uh, I got to follow where the spirit goes. So it just kind of, you know, that's what happens. So, um, 
But anyway, yeah, so signs and wonders, unless you see signs and wonders, you will in no way believe. And it, and it's almost like that today. Like if we don't experience the serendipity, the synchronicity, the signs, the divine meetings, then we don't believe. We feel that we're not divine. We feel that we're not on the right path. We feel that whatever. And I think a, a big part of what he's saying is like, you know, find it within you. Find that faith even without the signs. Find that faith because you know it's true even within you rather than having to see all these things. I love seeing the signs. I love seeing the, you know, we got eclipses and I see the numbers on the clock and the palindrome numbers, same forward, same backwards. I see the divine meetings in my life. I love that. I feel in flow. And I think that's a big part of like stepping into the spiritual matrix because it's then manifesting from spiritual to the physical matrix. But I think one of the core things that Jesus was always talking about is like, you know, blessed are those who like have that faith, even when there's no proof, even when you're in a season of your life, when things seem stale and dry and lonely, or they don't seem serendipitous or magical or wondrous, like to just keep to, to push yourself into that frequency to get there, get into that faith, get into that love. And then that all returns and comes from that. It's almost like a Rather than seeing signs and believing and then deciding to step into that, it's like you step into that and then you're going to see the signs and, and because you have that authentic faith. And I really think, and that's why I talk about sorcery versus magic. You know, sorcery is like you take stuff in the physical in order to receive in the spiritual. And magic is you, you, you manifest in the spiritual and then you see it in the physical. And it's like a whole different way of doing it because you're going somewhere you have no proof of first. And then you're going to see it like, I don't know. It's that that's my little download about that. So just think about what does that mean to you? Everything I talk about here, what does it mean to you? Like ask yourself, what does it mean to me? So anyway, y'all vibe on that. I love you guys. I hope you have a beautiful day. Please consider joining Mythos Group. We would love to have you in there. I promise you'll be you'll be welcomed with love and warmth and you're going to love the community. Um, it's nine bucks a month. You can cancel anytime though. Uh, we have people, I don't think anybody plans on canceling cause it's just such a cool experience, such a deep community. And then you get to fund what I'm doing here. I do this full time. So I get to continue doing what I'm doing because of you guys in mythos and, uh, you guys know who you are. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I love you guys. Y'all have a beautiful day. Go out and bless someone today. Um, and go within Find faith, love, find the Christ energy within you, and then you're going to see the signs. Don't look for the signs as as a as a, you know as a sign to then have the faith. Like reverse that. Like think about what Christ was saying here. So anyway, I love you guys. Y'all have a beautiful, beautiful day, and I'm going to see you tomorrow. Um, actually, I'm not going to see you tomorrow. I take Mondays off, by the way. Monday is my day off. But I will see you on Tuesday, Tuesday at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time and 3 p.m. Central Standard Time. So uh, y'all have an awesome, awesome day. Skinny Lee, what is up, my friend? Thank you very much. Yeah, I'll see you in there, my friend. Uh, make sure when you guys join, check your email because you're going to get a link to the Facebook group and instructions for how it all works. So go check that out. Um, and then uh, what was the other thing? Um yeah, I think that's it. Oh, make sure you use your your email and your name that's on Facebook so that I can actually get you into the group because if you use like a a throwaway one or something, then I can't really get you in or, and I don't know who you are. So just put your real info in there. I don't share that with anybody. You know, that that's so I can get you into the right groups and communicate. So anyway, love you guys. See you in there. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Y'all have a beautiful, beautiful day. I'll see you Tuesday. Peace.